This podcast is brought to you in association with From Sweden with Love, one of the oldest fan sites dedicated to the world of 007. Online since 2004 and also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Why not check them out today? James Bond, 007.se Nobody does it better. (laughs) <laughs> or as they say in Stockholm these days, Ingen gör det bättre. Every film Every stunt. Every story. Ever heard of Evil Can Evil? Welcome. To the YouTube series. I'm John Orty. I'm a stunt historian, author, broadcaster and producer and I'm the man behind behind the stunts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome to this series of YouTube shorts dedicated to the action and stunts in the James Bond films. My new book, Ever Heard of Evil Knievel, is the definitive guide to everything action-packed in the film franchise. The coordinators, the stories behind these incredible moments, all captured on film. We'll talk through some of those great stunt sequences and a few you may have missed along the way. So buckle up, you could be in for a bumpy ride. The book, podcast and YouTube series are also to be used as educational tools to learn from and to wonder at. This week we check out Thunderball from 1965 and it's one of my favourite Connery outings. Action Packed is a fair description too. We've got fights, car chases and masses of underwater excitement. So let's start by taking a look at the pre-title fight. Madame, I've come to offer So let's take a look at this fight here. Condolences. The pre-title. <laughs> Smooth talking devil. Right, so he's hit Bob Simmons, who of course is playing the widow, and the furniture starts to get broken. Look at him, it's all over the place. He throws this down on top of him, moves that cupboard out of the way, that, and there, of course, there's the reveal. And then he's thrown to the floor. Now, look, Bob Simmons is playing a character. Who's Dublin Connery? As we see here, it's Harold Sanderson, stuntman Harold Sanderson, who later becomes the captain of the Disco Volante. More furniture gets broken. There's a grandfather clock. Uh, this would be like an antiques roadshow nightmare. Look at this, everything all over the place. But this is an archetypal Simmons fight. Makes use of everything in the room. Uh, you name it, he's designed this. He said, look, this is what I want to do. This is a great move. I think it's called a monkey climb. Flicks him over his head, but he's wearing heels. Look, that's not going to be very pleasant at all. Extra padding around the midriff, I think, for that. Curtains are down. Bang! Hits him. There's another table gone for a burden. Now he starts to run. Trips him. Bang! Another piece of furniture. I mean, it's a brilliant, a really wonderful use of let's make as much use of this room as we possibly can. Give the direct, director and editor as many options as they can. Um, and a nice little touch. Oh, there he goes. That's it. Lights out. Um... And the final lovely little touch, of course, adorning the body with flowers. Now, let's take a look at Bob Simmons taking on the special effects team and a rocket-firing BSA motorcycle down at the UK home of Formula Let's take a look at the action in this car chase. Uh, We've got the players who are George Leach doubling for Sean Connery. Bob Simmons is in the Skyliner uh, doubling for Lippy. And uh, the motorcycle that you're going to see in a moment is uh, driven, ridden, I should say, by professional motorcyclist Bill Ivey. Here he comes now. So 
It's Silverstone, you can see they've painted lines on the tracks there, but uh, it's, a, it's a great location to use. When this fires, look at it from a, a modern day perspective, that car would be flying through the air most likely, uh, or uh, with uh, cannons being fired all over the place, explosions all over the shop. Now Bob Simmons is in that car and he's physically having to steer it from side to side before it drives off the side of the road. Now, of course, this is how he did it. He did it by sitting in the side of the vehicle, the door is down, he's down on the ground, and he's in a position where he triggers that explosion from the back, and then he has to bail out. This is the bailing moment. This is the important part. Look, he's falling out of the vehicle, has to jump clear, and there's just a moment where he is trapped in there. He's got an open face visor on, um, he's got a little bit of padding, but he's in the middle of a big, fairly big blaze, the, the, the grass is ablaze, and he's having to try and scramble his way up the bank, which is not easy. Not easy by any state of the imagination, but determination and adrenaline is forcing him to get out as quickly as he possibly can, which he manages to, luckily. Of course, there's the story where nobody could find him, uh, which is slightly more uh, concerning after the safety folk had gone in, and he turns up behind the director, just before the explosion. And finally, let's take a look at a stuntman who had one of those days on production, but he was looked after financially, which made the gag a lot easier to deal with. Well, well paid as far as 1965 was concerned anyway. This is Bill Cummings, and in the movie he plays Quist, who works for Largo. Good stuntman, a great face, who started his career back in the early 1950s. So, on the set of Thunderball in Nassau, and Bob Simmons asks, who wants to jump into the pool with the sharks? Everyone, obviously, takes a step back, leaving Bill all alone. He's told that the stunt will pay $450. Now, how they came to this price, I have no idea, as whatever fee they arrived at, it just wouldn't be enough. But to be on the safe side, he asked for an additional $250 just in case. But usually, a performer will receive a daily fee and what's called an adjustment for each stunt performed, uh, an additional financial incentive, if you will. Bill was asked if it was okay for two or three takes, and very obviously, and quite rightly, he said, no, you'll get one. The shark would need to be wrangled into position when in the right place, Bill jumped, giving the shark a glancing blow, just before it turned to attempt to bite him. By that time, he would have been dragged out of the water to safety, minus a shoe. Right. So, there we are. That's your lot for this week. More next week. And don't forget to subscribe and follow Behind the Stunts on all the social media platforms, so you can be kept up to date on the world of action and stunts. Until next time, bye for now.